thank you. I tell you, it's great to uh, be here. Glad to talk to you about my career in chemistry, but I must say, it's a little bit of anxiety around the subject because, sorry, I, I like to move, so I'm trying to get this thing connected. When I think about uh, careers in chemistry and career, careers in industry in particular, let's just put it there. When I think about those things, I think, you know, as a scientist, that's one place where there's absolutely no reproducibility. There is no one size fits all when it comes to a career. There is no one career path that is the same for every individual. So with that in mind, I just challenge you guys that as you listen to those of us who are on the panel, as you hear about careers going forward, don't look at what we're sharing with you and say, hey, if I do A, B, C, then X, Y, Z will happen just like it happened for John or just like it happened for Alveda. Uh, but rather, I challenge you to just think about what the possibilities are, and that's why we're all here uh, today. Because the reality is, if you've got a background like all of us do in the chemical sciences, and like you guys are, um, have and are uh, receiving, the reality is that the possibilities are, are really great. So with that, I've got this really nice title of the Global R&D Strategic University Leader at Dow. <laughs> you guys are probably wondering what that means, and I'm still trying to figure it out myself. <laughs> You'll find that in industry, and John can appreciate this, we're really good at coming up with long and glorious names for things, and we're even better at coming up with acronyms for them. So we don't have any cute acronym for that job yet. I'll tell you what this job means, but I think it uh, makes sense to level set with what my background uh, is. I actually come from Norfolk, Virginia, and had the bright idea to go to college only nine minutes away from home. I got a bachelor's degree in chemistry. I, I went to college saying, hey, I love science, I love college, I have absolutely no idea what I want to do. I love chemistry, excuse me. I have absolutely no idea what I want to do with uh, that degree. And so what I decided early on is that I would take advantage of the summers and try to figure out what I wanted to do in life. And so suffice it to say is that I took every opportunity every summer. I looked at government opportunities in the first summer. In the second summer, I went to an R1 academic institution to do research. In the third summer, I actually took an internship with Roman Haas Company outside of Philadelphia. And it was interesting. There I was actually working on developing these new uh, polymer acrylic materials that would be used as adhesives in food and packaging applications. And it was there that I realized that I think I was destined for a career in industry. Didn't know what it would turn out to be. Uh, but I wanted to have a career in chemistry, in industry. And I also knew that in order to have the kind of career that I wanted to have, that I had to be go, go beyond that degree at Norfolk State. And so I decided that I would uh, go to graduate school, looked at a number of options, and decided on the uh, University of Illinois. So I left the great city of brotherly love and went to the cornfields of Urbana-Champaign and got a PhD in materials uh, chemistry. I can tell you, though, that when I left Philadelphia, guys, I'm telling you, I left with the intent to go to Illinois, not stay that long, and oh, by the way, with every intention to go back to work for Roman Haas Company as a PhD chemist. Well, it didn't turn out quite that way. Um, I actually got job offers at a number of, uh, with a number of companies, including Dow and Roman Haas. I actually decided to go to Dow in Midland, Michigan over Philadelphia. What was I thinking? <laughs> Still trying to understand that one. But all is well that ends well because it turns out, we didn't know this at the time, but it turns out that years later, Dow would acquire Roman Haas. And now Roman Haas is Dow, Dow is Roman Haas. We're all one big happy family. <laughs> <laughs> and Sonia's husband is at Dow now as well, formerly Roman Haas. All right, so I will talk about the Global Strategic University thing, but I just want to touch on a point that John made because my, my path is a little bit off path. It's a little bit non-traditional, so I want to make sure you guys understand and aware of all the opportunities that are available to you uh, at a company like Dow, but at other companies as well. And as John, he, he, John already mentioned some of these, but there are opportunities, obviously, in making new products, uh, uh, basically refining processes to make them more efficient and more cost-effective working closely with customers in tech service and development kind of roles. We have chemical engineers who uh, actually run smaller scale up plants, so they're not in manufacturing, they're actually in research. Uh, there's the opportunity to manage people and to manage projects and programs. Very important to have scientists who are managing our intellectual capital por portfolio, so IP is very important to us. It, you know, it allows us to keep our competitive advantage. And so we actually have scientists that do, that, do those jobs, and many of them are PhD chemists and chemical engineers. Opportunity to do technology scouting, so looking at far out ideas, uh, new things, startup businesses, people we might want to acquire or, or businesses and technologies we might want to license. Um, we actually have chemists that do math, so the people who do budgeting for the R&D organization in Dow uh, are actually uh, most often chemists, chemical engineers as well. And then you can get into the space of recruiting. There's no better chemistry or chemical engineering recruiter than a chemist or chemical engineer for him or herself. 
Uh, we also have people that are chemists and chemical engineers who actually sit in our human resources organization and represent, uh, support the R&D uh, leadership. So tremendous amount of opportunities in industry. This is specifically in R&D, but as John mentioned, there are opportunities in marketing, sales, manufacturing, et cetera. All right, so global R&D strategic university leader. I put the path to that up here, and the point is not really to share with you what my internal Dow resume is, but more importantly to tell you, again, that the career path is unique. There is, not, there is none like it in Dow. The second point, though, is that you know, the change is along the way. So you have this path, and as you make a decision to change jobs, change roles, change companies, the change is triggered by a certain event, and that event can be personal, it can be professional. So let's just use mine as an example here. In 2002, 2003, I joined Dow. Uh, on the research assignments program. We have a rotational program where employees can go through four assignments in the first 15 months at that time uh, before accepting their uh, formal role in the company. It's a full-time job, not temporary. So I joined down the RAP program. Uh, had That was an acronym, by the way, RAP. <laughs> <laughs> had the opportunity to work on a number of great projects. And you know, we were in Midland, Michigan, and I was then, I am now, married to a football coach in Texas, just made most sense. Football and Texas kind of go together. <laughs> and so within five months, four months or so, we managed to move from Midland, Michigan to Texas while I was still on the rotational program. After completing three assignments, uh, I actually became pregnant with my first child. This is probably too much information, but I was bed rested for four months and uh, actually on maternity leave for another two months. And so after three assignments, six months of uh, leave away from the company, in my mind, it didn't make sense to come back and do that last rotation when all of my peers had sort of moved on. And so I decided to go into the core R&D material science group down in uh, uh, Freeport, Texas, and was promoted in, in that role as a research specialist. Had a number of great assignments, was developing and establishing myself as a subject matter expert in material science supporting our epoxy business in Freeport, our Angus business, business up in Chicago, and some of the longer term strategic projects. And then, we were a small material science group in Texas, disconnected a bit from the mothership in Midland, and then the, the leaders in Midland decided that they wanted a leader in Texas, and so out of nowhere, I became a leader among my peers, like the next day. Okay, so a new opportunity was created, and in that role I had responsibility for the project portfolio of my group, the budget, uh, and the performance of the employees in the organization here in Texas. I also had my own projects, but they became, at that point, that was probably a critical point because they became less technical and more sort of strategic and organizational. And so one of the big things we did there was to look at our overall core R&D organization, which has, I don't know, maybe 1,200 employees globally. And one of my jobs was to assess what our capability strength was and what capabilities strategically we needed to be developing um, to be successful in the future. That was a hit, and then all of a sudden, Dow announces the acquisition of Roman Haas. And so um, I had done this work with the uh, organizational strategic alignment, and the leaders who I delivered for in core R&D moved with the acquisition announcement. And so they were in charge of what we call the integration. When one company buys another or acquires another, there's a team that's put in place to make sure that the integration is seamless. So they called me and said, we want you on special assignment to work on the Roman Haas integration team. Really, really phenomenal opportunity at only five or six years in the company. And my job there was to go in and assess, hey, what technology does Roman Haas have? And I had a little bit of an idea, having been there for two summers as an intern, uh, what technology and capability does Dow have? And when you put those two together, what are the low-hanging fruit? What are the opportunities for growth and synergy when they come together? We actually captured $30 million in growth synergy activity, and those were the numbers that the CEO would report to the street to get us out of the, the dirt that we were in. <laughs> Sonia can probably appreciate the $5.82 stock <coughs> price we had there at that time. All right, so I was on special assignment for about nine months, and then after that I knew I wasn't going back to the previous role. It was time for something different, and we're really good at making up names, but we're also good at creating jobs and opportunities, and so at that time a new role was created. It was actually developed by putting three roles together, and so I took on the job in uh, middle of 2009 as the leader of strategic recruitment and the research assignments program. And so the RAP program that I joined, I became the leader of shortly uh, into my career. And so I would lead the employees on RAP and also responsible for Dow's overall PhD recruiting activity. So I've done, I've done that for probably last 20 or so months, and in the last few months, I uh, expanded that role to now be the leader of all of Dow's engagement with uh, our university partners. 
What does that actually mean? It means sort of five things. So I'm responsible for global hiring planning. So working with leaders in Dow across the globe to understand, hey, what are your hiring needs? Do you want somebody from the inside that's experienced? Do you want somebody from the outside from campus? Do you need a technologist? Do you need a PhD, et cetera? So I'm responsible for that. Heavy part of my job is uh, developing the strategy for our PhD recruiting, particularly here in the US, and implementation of that strategy. And so I manage about 60 plus recruiters who have their own day jobs, but as a part of their time on the side, they go out to campus and recruit. The interviewing process, metrics and reporting, et cetera. Uh, a big part of the new job is sponsored research programs. And so we work with universities um, across the country and across the world, actually, to sponsor research programs with professors, uh, and we pay for that. And it's obviously stuff that's of like interest to both the professor and Dow. And so the strategy, the proposals, the agreements, the negotiations all fall into my space. I still have RAP, and again, that means leading the people. I'm responsible for uh, sustained coaching and mentoring of uh, them and also managing their performance and the budgets and such. And then the, the very fun part of this is the outreach and support. And so we have a tremendous opportunity as a, as a, as a very large organization to reach out to not only universities, but also um, uh, uh, high schools and middle schools and such to uh, support. And so we leverage uh, uh, professional organizations as well, like ACS, to outreach. And so particular areas of interest for Dow are in, this, in, in, in the areas of STEM and STEM education, uh, diversity and outreach, and also sustainability. Let me wrap up with what, has, what I have declared over the last few months uh, that I've accepted this role as necessary, if you will, or at least uh, nice to have uh, for the role. Obviously hard skills, and I can go and talk about you know, my specific you know, skills that I've developed over the, year, over the year technically, but the point is having a technology background helps me do this job better. Right? I mean, I'm talking to universities and professors about the kind of research we want to do. I mean, I might want to halfway understand what we're talking about. I'm talking to PhD candidates and trying to decide whether they're the kind of people that we want to hire. I might want to understand what their research is about and be able to communicate with them. The PhD degree is not required, but it's certainly a plus. Again, we typically endow R&D, we hire primarily PhD talent, and so it helps that I've had that experience, have that background, and can appreciate uh, what the students are going through. Been trained in Six Sigma methodology, had the opportunity on a number of projects to uh, uh, exercise strategic thinking, and also formal training in project management has helped. And then real quickly on the soft skills, and I'm going to wrap up here, the key ones that everybody is talking about, interpersonal skills, communication skills are absolutely necessary. But there's some ones that you probably may not usually hear about, and so let me tackle those. The ability to lead by influence, right? So I have employees and I have to lead them. I have to have those kind of people management skills. But I also have to deal with the VPs and the CTOs and sometimes I have to get them to do things that they might not care to do. And so I have to have this ability to lead by influence, even though they don't work for me and I don't really work for them. Have to have a bias for action, right? You've got a candidate who wants to know, hey, where's my application? Or you've got a rotational employee that you have to deal with. And so there are all these competing priorities. So one has to really have a bias for action. Focus to win. I mean, I want to win internally. I want to make sure that I'm doing the best job for myself. But I also, when I'm going up against a competitor for a student, I want to win. I want to make sure they accept the job with doubt. So I really have to have that focus to win. The ability to energize and develop people, and again, when you're talking about going to campus and talking to students or talking to your rotational employees to empower them to be off to a great start of their career, you have to have that ability to, to energize and develop people, and obviously collaboration for results as well. Let me just call out this. The hard stuff, guys, is easy. It's really the soft stuff that's hard, and I don't care if it's really my career or any career that you guys decide, it's going to be the same for you too. You know the science, you've been taught that, you can do that. But when, it, when you have to deal with people and you have to deal with perspectives and you have to deal with personalities, it's the hard stuff that's easy, the soft stuff is hard. And then finally, because I get asked this a lot, especially internally in Dow, people look and say, well, Vita, you went to the University of Illinois and you got a PhD in chemistry. Why is it that you do this kind of job? And I'll tell you why. For me, it's because I understand what the reward is, right? At Dow, our people are our greatest asset. And this does, I don't mean this to be a Dow commercial, we really do believe this. Our people are our greatest asset. The chief technology officer says in his strategy document, there's nothing more important than the people we hire. So that means that identifying, attracting, retaining the best talent is really the highest priority of the organization. And so guys, look, even though I'm not the vice president, I'm not the CTO, I think I have the most important job based on that alone, okay? And I have the opportunity to lead that. 
The other uh, great reward, if you're like me, I like people, and so this job gives me the opportunity to meet so many different people, build an internal and external network that I think is unmatched. And then finally, this is just my internal career coaching that I use in Dow when I'm talking to newer employees, but I, I think it's uh, uh, meaningful here as well. These are the kind of questions I ask myself when I'm ever making an opportunity uh, turn or something, somebody's presenting a job opportunity, and I have said no to jobs. I ask myself three questions. Is it fun? Uh, do I understand what the value and the impact is? Is it impactful? And then thirdly, uh, do I bring something to the table? Can I contribute? And I tell you, if the answer is yes to all three of those things, then for me, the answer is yes to the job. If the answer is no to any one of those things, I tell, I tell the job no. Okay? So I think that's it. I have a slide on resources if you guys want more information about careers at Dow, innovation at Dow, sustainability, diversity, and outreach. There are some links there. And I think the slides will be available. Yes, um, all the slides will be posted online along with video of all of these talks that you can go back through and see and use the resources that everybody's presenting. So. Okay.